Amazon Web Services did not meet growth expectations why Microsoft and Google grew faster. What's that about? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider. This channel dwells into the details of cloud computing without an agenda or succumbing to the narrative established by big tech marketing. We examine what works, what does not, and the actual value of this technology in a balanced and information forward way. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, and comment. I'm your host, David Lenthicum, author, speaker, cloud and AI architect, top 10 cloud and AI influencer, B list geek, and over the hill mountain biker. Let's get going. So this isn't really a news channel where, you know, talk about concepts and what's working, what's not. And uh, so I don't really try to get these things out around particular news events. But this is a news event that probably occurred a month ago as you're listening to this, at least most of you. Some channel members uh, uh, get access to these videos early. So I'm recording this in early August and you're probably listening to this in early September. But anyway, <laughs> AWS tanked its numbers, uh, which means their stock price went down. And lots of people are concerned about that because obviously AWS is the market leader. So revenue performance of AWS reported a 17.5% increase in revenue for the June quarter, which while exceeding Wall Street expectations, marks a significant slowdown compared to competitors like Microsoft Azure, which grew by 39%, and Google Cloud, which grew by 32%. This discrepancy raises critical concerns about AWS's future growth potential in a rapidly evolving market. A couple of things here. Number one, I was an officer of a couple of publicly traded companies, and you have to do this quarter on quarter growth things to report your numbers. And, you know, even though if you, uh, you know, advise the street, that's what they call it, uh, the market and the uh, market analysts, things like that, that you're going to probably see. Uh, less than stellar growth numbers, uh, they still put growth numbers on you. And so even though you you uh, you basically release numbers that are truthful to what you said earlier, they still ding you for that. And I think AWS is getting a bit of that right now. But they're seeing a couple of things happening right now. I think, number one, the market is slowing down for AWS cloud. Uh, we'll go into that. And also the competitors, or the all cloud alternatives, not just the hyperscalers, Microsoft and Google, but private clouds, sovereign clouds, uh, managed service providers, co-location providers, alternative to the big hyperscalers have been out there for many years are starting to gain traction. And obviously they're going to get that market from somebody who's in that market now. And that somebody is normally going to be the leader in that. This case, it's AWS. And so AWS is getting dinged. So there's margin pressure as well. So the recent financial results also indicate that AWS's margins contracted by 32.9%, the lowest since 2023. This decline coupled with Amazon's substantial capital expenditures, which are going to be $31.4 billion, that's billion with a B, uh, in the last quarter, suggests that a troubling trend where increased spending is not translating into proportional revenue growth or profitability. We talked about this many times before. I think that, you know, AWS has kind of lost its innovative edge. And so even though they're spending on research and development, which is the right thing to do, you know, getting these huge wins in the marketplace like serverless computing and, you know, the rise of, uh, you know, the rise of container based computing, you know, things like that, the AWS is really able to, you know, attach onto. And in, in many cases, they innovated the space really aren't happening for AWS anymore. So, the, the reasons for that are probably pretty complex, but we're seeing AWS, it seems to be about a year or two years behind, you know, some of the other cloud providers out there and certainly around AWS. And I think this is what the analysts and the market analysts are looking at right now. How well is AWS going to expand its market share, you know, based on growing around the AI off offerings that it has? And so far, very unimpressive. And so the other folks, Google and Microsoft are growing substantially faster. Now, in many cases, I think that's going to be because they have office automation offerings in the space, which which they kind of roll into their cloud offerings and the cloud revenue. So Copilot with Microsoft and Gemini with, with Google. And so they can really make the claim that, uh, you know, they're seeing significant growth around people buying AI from them. But in many instances, it's just being bundled uh, into 
the existing stuff. I have Copilot on the on the word processor I'm using right now, which is Word for Windows. I didn't ask for it. <laughs> it just showed up. But I think they're counting that as an AI sale. And same thing with Gem- Gemini. If you're using Google Docs, you know, things like that, you'll see Gemini in the upper right hand corner. You didn't ask for it to be there. I think you can configure it so it doesn't show up. But, you know, they're really kind of counting that as a win for their AI growth numbers. And I think that's a little tricky because AWS does not have anything that's like that. They don't have a popular office automation suite. In other words, they basically focus on selling infrastructure as a service stuff, which are things you can typically find in a traditional data center, storage, compute, you know, GPUs, TPUs, things like that. That's a little tougher market to move into, and it's going to be slower growth in terms of how people are adopting AI in that market. So we have to look at where they are now in terms of AWS and where they're, where they're going. So the competitive landscape, AWS has been a pioneer in cloud computing, but it is now at a crossroads. The aggressive strategies that are being employed by Microsoft and Google and other companies out there in adopting AI and machine learning technologies are drawing customers away. AWS's failure to capitalize on the AI way presents a critical oversight that could jeopardize its long-held leadership position. And that's a great way to sum, sum this up. In other words, people are looking as a metric for growth and innovation in terms of what you're doing around AI. And, and in cloud computing is going to be no different. And certainly people are looking to AWS, which has a huge market share. I think it's 65% of the cloud market share right now. Uh, and they haven't lost much of that. Uh, they may be slow growing, but they're still, you know, still the leader in the space. Have probably not presented the innovative capabilities that I think people were looking for them to do, including myself. And I've, I've been very critical in AWS in really, you know, kind of taking some weak moves, you know, over the last few years, certainly around AI moving too late into the marketplace. You know, for, ex- for instance, their recent, you know, move into the agentic AI space by offering a stack uh, of agentic AI tools and technology, which is basically just reconstituted existing tools, mostly. Uh, with some new stuff bound to it, it was kind of weak tea, you know, based on the fact when it was presented and the fact there was no innovative differentiators in there. In other words, there's no good reason why you would use AWS, you know, to build your agentic AI applications uh, because there's nothing in there that's really kind of, you know, new and exciting. And and we're seeing the startups and we're seeing Microsoft and Google, the other hyperscalers, and certainly Oracle's in there, IBM's in there, Alley Cloud's in there, things like that that are doing a little bit better on the innovation side. And so AWS is really going to have to change its game, I think, to catch up in the marketplace where they need to be. Um, I, I don't expect them to fail, but you know this could be them dying a death of a thousand cuts if they're unable to create the innovative differentiators in the space. Right now, people are very critical of AWS. They view them as selling you know, walled gardens, very proprietary, you know, hard to switch off their particular cloud providers. It's a very good cloud. It certainly is the easy button, whether you're setting up business analytics applications and AI applications, but they've kind of defined their cloud as the as the last stop uh, for platforms. In other words, everything should exist in the walled garden of AWS. And I think that uh, in many cases, the enterprises are rejecting that. And so they're moving in different heterogeneous directions. And so if they view AWS as really kind of having one or none, in other words, you're going to be in our platform and 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 basically conform to the way in which we're building a platform or you're not going to be successful and i think that message which may have been a little res which resonated five years ago and certainly 10 years ago is not resonating today people are pushing back on it that's why you're seeing the repatriation going on and things like that and most of the repatriation is going to be peeping people moving from aws platforms where they migrated you know many applications over the last 10 years you know, back to the on-prem alternatives or back to other public cloud providers or back to private cloud providers. So the the dilemma is innovation. So despite having vast resources, AWS appears to be lagging behind in, you know, technological innovation. The emphasis has shifted to AI-driven solutions among its competitors, while AWS seems to be taking a more cautious and slower approach. This hesitation might hinder AWS from seizing the opportunities presented by one of the most transformative tech trends of our generation. So obviously cloud computing was disruptive and transformative, and certainly AI is going to be much the same thing. And so if AI is out there and enterprises are now looking for strategic partners 
to bring AI into their infrastructure, you know, AWS should be at the cusp of innovation in the space. In other words, we're not just, you know, saying, hey, yes, too, we're doing a, a, a genetic AI, too, but actually net new technologies that haven't existed before. You know, I always used to tell people when I work for, uh, you know, as a CTO for, you know, software companies, things like that, if it's already out there, I don't want to, I'm not interested in it. I'm not interested in following some other trend that some other company created. So we're, we should be setting, you know, you, and, you know, setting the rules in terms of what the technology means and how, how it's applied in the space. And I think AWS, by the way, was huge amounts of resources, way more than I ever had as CTO, uh, have the ability to do that. They're just not innovating as much as they need to innovate. I don't know if that's talent in the organization. The fact of the matter is they may have trouble, you know, recruiting some of the AI innovators out there. I know there's headhunters out there. They're pulling them out of you know, Meta and out of Microsoft and out of Google and, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, headhunting that's going on there. And, but whatever AWS needs to do, they need to figure out how to make this happen, catch up, or else they're going to find themselves way behind. And it's going to be an accelerated decline because everybody's able to switch off to different cloud technologies and on-prem technologies fairly quickly. We know how to do that very well now. So, and the other thing is pointed out is the investment it, that's being made versus the return. So AWS's heavy investment in infrastructure and cutting edge technologies is not yielding the same growth benefits as seen with Microsoft and Google. And that's a key problem. This trend raises the question, is AWS's investment strategy effective or does it require reevaluation? The company must ensure that spending translates into market leadership rather than you know, depleting margins. So what the investors are seeing and certainly what the street's seeing and certainly what I'm seeing and some of the other, you know, tech, technology analysts and cloud analysts in the space, that they're spending a great deal of money, but there's no innovative differentiators that are coming back from the spending, which would be a concern to me. If I was CEO of AWS, I'd have everybody in my office every Monday, you know, what are we doing in terms of becoming innovative? What new ideas do we have? You know, how are we going to take it into the market? How are we defining the new space? And so... You know, if this is about, um, you know, shifting into a fast follower focus, which I think what AWS is kind of doing now, uh, they're not going to win that game. You can't be a leader in this space and be a fast follower because obviously you want people to follow you, not necessarily uh, some of your competitors in the space. And so they have to really kind of get way more aggressive in how they innovate in the space. And that means, you know, putting up some L's, putting up some failures. And I think that's going to be OK but I'd rather see them, you know, fail nine times and succeed once than, you know, put up mediocre stuff that's going to have slow growth opportunities, not show innovative differentiators in the space, things like that. And people ultimately aren't going to move there. There's, if there's nothing compelling for AWS, um, they're kind of a, a bit of a, you know, pain to deploy and work with. And so people are going to shift to other ways. And so they have to understand that that's going to be the reality of the market. So where are they going to be? Well, the coming years are critical for AWS. I think the company must pivot quickly, reallocate resources, and embrace a more aggressive innovation strategy to reclaim its competitive edge. So past successes do not guarantee future growth. AWS must act decisively to avoid uh, falling behind as cloud computing as the cloud computing landscape evolves. And it's time for action now. And the stakes, you know, couldn't be higher. So it depends on what AWS does in the next 12 months as to, you know, whether they're going to be successful or not. So if they make some aggressive moves, and obviously we have reInvent coming up. Uh, I'm going to be there, by the way. Uh, so look me up if you're going to be at the event. Um, you know, that's when, you know, the innovative declarations are made and, you know, have the big things. If it's just normal upgrades to their existing services and, you know, we're, we're having faster storage systems now or, you know, we're putting in better observability systems, you know, things like that, things that don't really move the needle anymore. Um, they're going to be in trouble because I think enough people are going to look at them as losing their edge and something where it's a company we it does that's expensive to work with, by the way, many times, you know, that of some of the on-prem resources. We talked about that here. And if there's no reason to do that, there's no reason to spend the money, they're not going to do it. And so they're the most expensive options. And if they're option out there, if they're the most, they're not the most innovative option, then people aren't going to leverage that cloud. And then they're going to move over to other alternatives. The alt cloud stuff's very compelling now. All that stuff is pretty good. And it provides, you know, the 
minimum viable services that most of the enterprises need at a greatly reduced cost. And so if AWS doesn't knock your socks off in terms of you know, having innovative stuff, people are going to vote with their feet and move to other cloud providers and move to other on-prem-based solutions. And I don't blame them. Well, anyway, you know, good luck to AWS. I have a lot of friends there and a lot of people use that software, by the way. Uh, it's probably the most uh, used platform out there in terms of the cloud. And it's going to be like that for a while. So anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos on this channel, as well as my other YouTube channel, Dave is Not AI. Also, check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course, my generative AI architecture course on Go Cloud Careers. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, you guys stay very, very safe. Later.